Hey everybody, this video isn't specifically Nix related, but I promise there's a little bit of Nix at the end if you're interested. I've been using my Moonlander keyboard since late 2020. I'd used various natural and curved keyboards in the past, mostly of a Logitech variety, and they never quite fit what I was looking for despite being more comfortable than a standard layout. The ZSA Moonlander is the best keyboard I've ever personally used. I haven't had the opportunity to try a lot of different split keyboards, but this really fits the bill for me, and I've made several modifications over the years. My one gripe about the Moonlander has always been that the keycaps and switches are too similar to traditional desktop keyboards. I much prefer the low profile travel and feel of laptop style keyboards and up until recently there just weren't any options available. So to mimic the feel as best I could I opted to use Kale Silver switches which are relatively low travel, low actuation force and they're linear and then I would add double o-rings to the stock Moonlander keycaps to reduce the travel and the noise. When ZSA Voyager was released relatively recently I seriously considered picking one up specifically because of the low profile. However the layout has substantially less keys on the board than the Moonlander and while there's an argument to be made for making do with less keys by way of combos and layers. I've not only grown to love the layout of the Moonlander, but also tend to just be inaccurate enough in my key presses that adding more complexity to everyday keystrokes would be counterproductive. So I decided to wait until a modification option became available and in April of this year I emailed ZSA support asking if they knew of anything that I could do. It happened to be the same day that a blog post was published to their website about how to do a DIY low profile Moonlander. There's a link to the article in the description below and I'm not going to rehash all of the information there. So if you consider doing something similar to what I'm describing after watching this video, definitely check it out. The one thing to note, however, is that in the article, the author incorrectly states that there is one low profile switch type I found that is socket compatible with MX style switches. That's from Otemu, creatively called Otemu medium low profile or just Otemu low profile switches. I made the mistake of ordering Otemo low profile switches which are not MX compatible. They are MX low profile compatible. They have a slightly different pin layout. Otemu medium low profile switches however are compatible with MX and that's what you should be looking for for the Moonlander. I'll be contacting the author about this so by the time you see this video perhaps the article will have been edited for clarity. For the low profile keycaps, I ended up ordering a bunch of the thin caps from Tai Hao that were also mentioned in that article. And I have to say that the quality from Tai Hao is fantastic. I've never cared about whether a product has a premium unboxing experience or whatever other bullshit term is used for spending money on something that is going to be going straight in the garbage unless you're a crazy person who keeps boxes for everything, but that's a separate discussion. I have to say that I was a bit surprised by how nicely Tao Hai packaged things considering they're just keycaps. They added a small bag of extra caps with various switch types as a sample, which is a nice touch, although I'll never end up using them. Each pair of long keys was individually bagged and bundled as a, in a secondary outer bag. And the regular size keys were slotted in a well-packaged foam tray with a clear box around it. And like I said, all of the bags, boxes, and foam bits went in the garbage almost immediately after I unpackaged them, so there's a lot of waste. But you can tell that the company really cares about their perception and quality. So I thought I'd mention it. The switches are hot swappable and changing them out is fairly simple. You just want to make sure that the pins don't get caught on the outer edges of the receptacle that they go in, otherwise they'll bend and you'll have to pop them out again and straighten them. After swapping out all the switches, I tried to put on all the keycaps with a single o-ring to dampen the sound, but the profile of the stems on these switches is such that the o-ring ends up hitting the edge of the switch just enough during depression that the caps loosen over time and will eventually pop off which is irritating as fuck. So I've just learned to deal with the additional sound. I do have some thin sound dampening uh, rubber tape from an earlier project that I might apply at some point. With the caps installed, the overall profile of the keyboard is significantly reduced and the comfort of both typing and resting at home row is quite notable. I found that my error rate for hitting multiple keys at once during a key press due to the height of the old keys is much lower and I can also type for longer periods of time now before I get finger and wrist fatigue, which is fantastic. It's exactly what I wanted. A tip to consider on your own keyboard is the use of the additional reference keys. These are the little keys that have a little bump on them that you can feel with your index finger 
here and they typically go in the F and J keys on a QWERTY keyboard so that you can quickly determine if you're resting on the home row or not. I have found that I often get offset when reaching for the top row of keys or when I'm pressing multiple top row keys in succession. So I've added reference keys where the four and seven keys typically are. And additionally, when playing video games that use the WASD layout, I typically have my pinky finger resting on the left shift key with my index ring and middle finger on the WASD keys. Of course, if you're using keycaps with printed characters on them, then you're likely shit out of luck for this, but I intentionally moved to keys that were character free to force myself to use keys and symbols that I don't often use, and I have a bad tendency of looking at the keyboard to find them, so now I'm forced to actually remember. Additional modifications I have are the USB port that I've attached to the left-hand side of the front leg. You'll remember this from the YubiKey video because I keep my YubiKey Nano in that slot for quick access when I'm prompted to confirm presence. Basically, this is just a USB extension cord that I used a piece of plumbing copper on and uh, attached it to the leg. I also have some 3D printed secondary legs to prop up the moon ladder and then an angle that works for me. And I also find that having the mouse located between both halves of the keyboards provides a much more comfortable angle of mouse usage compared to having it way off to the right side. In terms of customization, you can find my mapping profile on the Oryx website. I keep things fairly simple with four layouts, one being the primary typing layout, one for F keys, page up and down, home, and the arrow keys, which are mapped to the Vim Motions HJKL. I've also got a media and numpad layer, which allows me to use a one-handed numpad, as well as control, volume, mute, play, pause, forward and back functionality. This layer also has the reset key that's used for flashing the keyboard firmware. And the last layer is for gaming, and it's basically exactly the same as the primary layer, except most of the lights are off to help with game immersion. Now the last thing I want to talk about is that little bit of Nix stuff related to the Moonlander. To enable full compatibility with NixOS, you can use hardware.keyboard.zsa.enable equals true, and you'll likely also want to add the package keymap. Keymap is the official application from ZSA and can be used for telemetry, layout reference, and flashing. There are also direct links from the app to the Oryx website where you can modify your layout and then generate and download the firmware for flashing through Keymap. That's all for this one. Let me know what you think in the comments below or join us on the Discord server. Special thanks as always to my generous supporters. See you in the next one and remember, the way out is through.